Uh, is everything good? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending the last talk in this session. Um, this is going to be a good one because the speaker has turned up. <laughs> we're, yes! We're sadly in the previous one, our speaker didn't get his visa. So, so, so a little bit sad, State of Australia. Those are the opinions of myself and the organising committee. Uh, so so we, uh, we're starting a little bit late, but we will run into uh, the changeover time. I don't think we'll have a problem with that. And uh, we'll, I'll let Ducky introduce herself, but if we could please give her a warm welcome. And Hello, future and present friends. I'm Ducky, and I like Python and games. Um, I hope you do too, otherwise you might be in the wrong room. Don't worry, you can like leave, it's okay, I won't be offended. Uh, if you're a snake exterminator, you're definitely in the wrong room, but you're still welcome to stay. You might have been a bit confused. And if you're the opposite and you just really, really like snakes, then there might be a couple of those in this presentation. So at least you're in the right country. Uh, which, speaking of which, I used to be living in this country, or at least pretty nearby. Um, but I was kind of finding it a bit difficult to remember the Prime Minister's name, and I was really worried, what if a paramedic asks me, and I don't know, and I have the wrong answer, and what happens? So I decided to move somewhere that was a bit more consistent. Um, so now I live in Germany. <laughs> Uh, but I always love coming back to PyCon AU uh, and, and Australia in general. But PyCon AU especially, it's, a, it's got a very uh, special, special place in my heart. Um, it's really important to me because uh, when I learnt to program, I basically only learnt to program because I, want, I like games. That's, that's literally it. Some course was like, hey, you like games? You can learn to make them. And I was like, that's... That could be interesting. Um, so I learned to code entirely because of games. Um, and yeah, and so I went and learned to code. I learned a few languages. They were OK. I didn't, wasn't their biggest fan, but I was able to do some small little games things. And that was very exciting. And then someone introduced me to Python. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in love. So uh, I, I fell in love with Python. But then I was told that Python and games don't love each other as much. And I was like, oh, this is, that's sad. People were like, you should go learn something different. You should definitely stick to C++ and C Sharp and, and do all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, well, OK. Uh, so I do that as well. Um, and and I, don't, I don't hate them or anything. I still like them. I mean, Python will stay my uh, first love. And learning something new is never a bad thing. I'm very. Uh, tools for the job rather than do everything around the tool. Um, but back in 2013, I think, it might have been 2012, uh, I came to PyCon AU and I was re-inspired to reunite my love of games and Python. Uh, and really, it's just all PyCon AU's fault, so <laughs> blame them for this presentation. I mean, you're here, so you can't think it's that bad yet. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to like put on this presentation because I wanted to continue making sure that we could have more snakes in our games in any way we possibly can. Um, so I know we're still in that after lunchtime break where people might be feeling a bit like a nap. I know I always do, especially after lunch. Uh, but afternoon tea is soon, don't worry. Uh, but are you all having a good time at Pike NEU so far? Yeah? <laughs> That, that totally wasn't loud enough. I mean, I guess I'll blame lunch for that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely thanks to the awesome volunteers and organizers, so be sure to thank them whenever you can, and I personally would love to thank them. Uh, they do a great job every year. Uh, but right, the real reason we're here. Uh, games. Who likes playing games? <laughs> Who just likes games in general? Oh, <laughs> that was significantly less. And <laughs> who here? likes to make games, or at least kind of wants to try it out. Yeah. And of course, who here likes Python? The programming language, but if you like snakes and best, especially ball pythons, put up two hands. Yeah, they're adorable. Uh, <laughs> excellent, so cool, we're all on the same page. We've, we've got this. Well, uh, do you guys like want to make a game? Because like, that, that could be a good way of figuring out Python and games. So. I'll be honest, it's going to be a hypothetical game. <laughs> I'm not about to live code any game in front of you. I'm not about to do any live coding. Uh, I've learnt my lessons from other presentations. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a disclaimer, there won't be any games coded in these slides. But if you want to attempt to follow along what I'm saying, feel free. Uh, good luck with the download speeds. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck to you. We can have a game jam later, maybe after this talk. 
Uh, but uh, I'll be honest, I'm really nervous up here. It's oh, my hand is like that. Uh, and I've totally forgotten everything I know about game making. <laughs> but it's okay, I have slides. And they're gonna tell me what to do, hopefully. Um, so this is this is a nice good overview of kind of what how you can go through a game making process. So it's pretty easy. It's got four steps. Man, a game in four steps, that would be great. Um, concept, cool, so we can come up with a concept and then we can worry about the less later. So uh, snakes, snakes are a good concept. We like, we've established we kind of like snakes. I mean, maybe snakes on their own might not be super great. So uh, we can try and combine them with something, like some sort of transport maybe, like, like a boat. Helicopters are pretty cool, spaceships are in vogue. But I mean, like, we could kind of go between those. We could just, planes, planes are nice. I mean, I had to get on a few planes to get here and I have to get on a few planes to go back, so they're on my brain a bit. Um, so yeah, so we'll do some snakes and some planes. Cool, so we'll, that's, that's our concept. We don't need to worry about anything else. Maybe we should flesh it out later, but it's fine. We'll, we'll come back to it, I'm sure. So, we've got a concept, excellent. <laughs> Step one, done. Well. Not quite. We might want to start mapping it out a bit more. So uh, there's this great tool called Twinery. Uh, we could do that. It's, it's a great storyboarding tool. We can make some really cute storyboards. Uh, we could make our entire game in Twinery if we wanted to just make interactive fiction. Uh, and bonus, it was all built in Python. Well, Kind of. <laughs> all of the 1.x one, one versions is, is all Python. Unfortunately, now if we want to stay with Python, we can only do this. Uh, they've got other versions and they are more web-based technologies. So CSS, HTML and JavaScript, you can make your entire game with that. And, and that's really great too. No, we like, I'm, I'm a web developer as well, so I like those too, why not? Um, but if we really want to stick to snakes in our games, we can only do these. Um, but yeah, so we can lay out our concept uh, using the storyboards, and this will come in handy later if we want to work with anyone who doesn't really want to code as well, so they can see kind of where our novel is going, uh, well, our game. Initially, we might start it out as just the story, so we can maybe make a nice little game about a snake that has to get on a plane, because, I mean, snakes need to get from point A to point B as well, and slithering can be pretty tired. I don't know, maybe legs are helpful, Maybe they're not, but they're clearly not as fast as a plane. So we need to get these snakes to get to places. Um, so yeah, we can branch out where our snake is going. Maybe, maybe they want to go to New Zealand. Maybe they want to go to Germany. They, there's lots of different options we can have, and we can create our story through that. So that's, that's what we can do. And we could even use this for all our production phases as well, so we can make our entire game with this, as I said before. Uh, but if we don't want to do that, if we want to maybe add some visuals to our story, uh, we could use RenPy or RenP. I still have no idea how to pronounce it. Um, but now we can make a visual novel style game. So we upgrade on our interactive fiction and add some cute little graphics. And look, they've even got like a cute little like, graphic with a snake. Excellent. We don't even have to make things, right? Perfect. We can just finish our game in RenPy and package and ship it. Game complete, excellent. Whew. Well, not quite. We, this is all great, for us, especially if we want to code with Python, um, but we might need a few other things to complete our game. Code is a really important aspect of video games, but it's definitely not the only important part. But we can see how we can implement code into all those other parts anyway. <laughs> so. We can go get some open assets if we want, or we want to like maybe make our own thing, maybe get some more atmosphere going with some audio. I mean, snakes like vibrations, audio is pretty important there. And obviously we want to have a whole range of adorable snakes, so we need more graphics. Um, so how can we do this? Well, I mean, there's plenty of design tools out there. I personally love anything free and open source. So these two are like some pretty good go-tos for me, Inkscape and GIMP. And bonus, huh, we can make extensions in Python with Inkscape, excellent. So now there's like, if we just want to make a thing, but I'm terrible with the graphic user interface, don't know why, but I can just script it with Python and then like give that little extension to Inkscape and be like, hey, can you make this thing for me? Um, so that's really great and that's just fully supported with Inkscape. Um, 
yeah, it makes it much easier, especially as you can tell by my amazing graphics. I'm not super great at them <laughs> just normally <laughs> without code. Uh, and then we can go to GIMP. So GIMP allows plugins with Python using the GIMP Python um, tool, which is similar to their script foo tool, but this allows you to have your plugin to have more control over whatever is happening, whereas script foo is not as in control. <laughs> That really makes sense. But yeah, so now you can tell I might not be quality, gra like I'm not a quality graphics person, as you might be able to tell. So I'm not super experienced with these tools and game art is definitely not my personal forte. However, uh, I do know some tabletop game designers and some other just game designers and even just non-game designers who uh, use all these tools in their work uh, quite regularly. I can't tell you what they are exactly right now uh, for many reasons. Uh, but yeah, these are actually already in use by like game designers as well as non-game designers uh, for their design work. And you can just use Python with it, which is great. Um, so that's the visuals for our little visual novel. So what would be good next? Well, I mean, snakes and vibrations, so obviously audio. Uh, now this is a bit of a weak point of mine and possibly a weak point in the games industry at large. If you want to get into games audio, you should definitely do that. We always need more and more audio people because it's such an important part of the game. Uh, though I really love the accessibility of subtitles as well. Um, so these are a couple of things I've looked into but haven't got to implement fully myself yet. I haven't found any of my audio designer friends in the games industry or found any games that use them just yet, but there's always an opportunity. And so maybe if we have a game jam later, we can start to use these and make some more audio in Python for our games. So that's, that's our audio, that's our visuals, we've got our story. We could ship this now, yay! Game done, awesome. Thank you for coming to my talk, that's excellent. Yeah, we did it. But you know, I love visual novels and interactive fiction, but you know, okay, first, we haven't even started on testing. Uh, and did we really, really think we did as good a job on our weak spots as we thought? Like, did we really do the best we could with our graphics and audio? And yeah, visual novels and interactive fiction are great. I love playing them, but I've totally changed my mind and uh, this is not a democracy in this game company. This is just my little dictatorship. So we're going to go make a different game now. <laughs> so this is where my Python and, and game love was reunited uh, in point and click adventure games because who loves point and click adventure games? Yeah. Uh, and this is a great game. Uh, next, this is My Ex-Boyfriend the Space Tyrant, which is an Australian game. And the creator actually has spoken at, at PyCon Australia before about this library. So I highly recommend going and checking out that talk about PyVita. Uh, but it's a great little library to help you make point and click adventure games all in Python. Um, and they've made several other games after this as well. I haven't got to play them yet. Hopefully soon I will. Um, and also Australian, I think even here in Sydney or at least New South Wales, so bonus. Um, so we can recreate our snake game in PyVita. We can have a little point and click. We can like get out, get some little animations in there using our other graphics and have our like little snake wiggle around and go and see if it can get into the cabin ba overhead cabin baggage, even go to the toilet. Oh, that'd be great. Snakes on planes, that sounds like a great idea. Um, so yeah, we could do point and click adventure game. Or, you know, maybe we want to go 3D. Maybe we, you know, everyone's doing 3D things, there's 3D movies, 3D TVs. I mean, Pokemon is kind of 3D if you look at augmented reality. So let's, let's look at some other 3D engines that we could use. Um, well, there's Panda 3D, which was used by Disney for Pirates of the Caribbean, and <laughs> you guessed it, Python again. Oh, so wonderful. Um, so this helped create uh, quite a few games. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean Online, uh, Toontown. There was just a bunch of stuff put out in this. Uh, so I don't know why anyone told me I couldn't have Python in games. Uh, they were silly. Clearly I could have just turned to Panda 3D. Uh, and that's if we want to go the 3D way. Um, if we do go the 3D way, we'll need some cool things in animation. And say you want to work at some cool big company that has two Zs in it, uh, they're definitely really into people who do Python, uh, especially for animation and rigging those animations. Um, so 
Uh, Maya is a, a tool that people use in uh, making 3D animations and rigging them. And Python is amazingly handy when it comes to rigging these animations. So in some of the biggest games you've like possibly ever seen, uh, Python is back there helping make all those cool animations, all the dance emotes, all the, all the really important things that you need in your game. Um, so there's that. And there's like, there's a bunch of other ways I use. I couldn't actually possibly include them all in this talk. And unfortunately, I couldn't possibly include all the games in this talk because sometimes people don't want other people to know what they use. Um, but I know in the Australian industry, there are people who are using Python in their communications. So if you're, if you're not making a game by yourself on a stage in a room full of people, um, you might want to communicate via something like Slack. Uh, or, or any of the other chat systems. And you can create really great bots using Python to then tell people, give people alerts as to when something's happening, when something needs to be compiled, uh, and notify people when that's finished. So that way, you don't have to be like the XKCD comic and just go sword fighting. You can just leave that running and then do some other work, and then another notification will pop up. I know it's, it's a shame to lose out on the sword fighting just for Slack notifications. but. Maybe you'll get the game finished eventually, <laughs> like me and many of my projects. Uh, so Slackbot's a really great way uh, that Python is used. Uh, it's also used widely for anything with automation. I know you all look really shocked. Python is used for automating things. Uh, but especially in games, uh, pretty much every uh, big game company I know is using Python. Uh, just helping create little tools to stick little things together and automating any processes they don't want to worry about, um, which is very exciting. They always want, if you, if you say you like Python, people are like, oh, great, you can come work in the back end of games, uh, which isn't necessarily where you always want to be. So that's just in the concept uh, and design phases, the production phase. Then there's, of course, uh, the post-release. Um, so in post-release, there's, there's a bunch of ways that Python is doing things. So especially uh, for some really big titles like uh, Battlefield 2 and some other things, um, Python is being really useful uh, for making add-ons to the games. Um, so for the modding community, um, Python's been very useful for taking a game and then making it different, sometimes even better. Um, so there's lots of ways that you could use Python just as a consumer to like play with your own games, uh, which is really exciting because game developers love seeing what consumers do with their games and then seeing how they expand upon that because obviously we can't think of everything. Uh, I did say in my abstract that I was going to try and incorporate a bit more about uh, just comparing some a uh, AAA games and indie games that are using Python. I then found out that I couldn't use a lot of that information that I have, unfortunately, um, to tell you all about what games are using Python, specifically where. Um, but I can kind of mention a few that are possibly a bit more widely known. Um, so uh, there's Battlefield 2, obviously. There was a bunch of Disney games. Uh, EVE Online, which is, does anyone know EVE Online? So it's a really big game that has a lot of cool things in it where you have space wars and you work another job and have another life, I guess. Um, and that actually uses uh, stackless Python, uh, which is really important for a game as big as EVE because they have to already do some amazing things with time manipulation uh, whenever anyone's having a huge battle. So they really want to avoid as much overhead as possible. So stackless uh, Python really helps with that. Um, then Civ 4, I believe, used it for tasks. <laughs> 10 million other games uses Python for tasks, as we would be surprised. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you about, how it's, it is already out there, and you can go and do that. And of course, there are other things out there, like uh, Pygame and Piglet and various other things that are wrappers for those, uh, to make your own game entirely just in Python. Um, and they're really great, and I would love to see more games from them. I personally don't use them as much because I just use some other game engines that don't allow that as much. Um, and there was another really important thing, which I only found out about recently, uh, but Python is being used for some pretty big games right now, uh, I think possibly with the company with two Zs. Um, so 
PyQt and PySide uh, are used for the uh, the GUIs of a lot of games um, to help with any like 3D uh, graphical user interface, um, even on mobile games. So that's something that I haven't known as much about, but is coming up more and more lately. Um, so yeah. I hope I've been able to tell you a little bit about uh, some Python and games. And I know we didn't quite finish and ship our amazing snake and playing the game. Uh, maybe we can talk about that more later this weekend if anyone wants to help me come build a game. <laughs> Thank you, Ducky. We actually have a few minutes if you want yep. to um, answer questions. So if anybody's got a question. Sure. Hey, um, I just wanted to ask you, how do you feel about Doki Doki Panic and how it's been all written in uh, RenPy and how that developer then took RenPy and added more, fi more little secrets into the code and that you had to dig around everything for it? I am always up for that. So uh, I'm a web developer by trade, and I always, whenever I build my friends a website, I always build in like little Easter eggs that not even they know about all of them yet. So I'm always for like, uh, and like as well as open source and free software, I'm always for like taking something and then expanding on it and making it even bigger. What was the game you mentioned? Oh, right, yeah, sorry. I thought, I thought you said something about Floppy Doggy, and I was like, this sounds like a great game. <laughs> but yeah, no, the Doggy Doggy Literature Club. Uh, yeah, no, that was amazing. Uh, that did so much cool stuff. Yeah. Um, Right, uh, that's that's also what I found amazing with Python games. It seems almost so much more simple to like get into making a game yourself, and like even if you just want to quickly prototype a game, Python is so useful for that. I know so many big company or larger indie studios who are using things like Twine and uh, RenPy to like quickly prototype out a game. Paper prototyping is great, but it's always good if you can like uh, if you have a remote team and things, and then you can like send that out to people. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, I know there's an issue a lot with a uh, Pi game with getting X's from that. I've managed to succeed um, a whole one times. Um, <laughs> you may have... Uh, I think I've succeeded approximately the same amount of times. Yeah. Even less with Python 3. Um, yep. <laughs> is that as much an issue with things like RenPy and some of the others you mentioned? In my experience... No, and it's kind of the reason I don't use Pygame as much. Um, I used to use Pygame a lot to teach uh, kids how to code, and I would like make a modular game in Pygame, and then I would give that to them, which meant any level they reached, they could like modify and have their own game. But I definitely <laughs> had that problem a lot with Pygame and uh, wanted to totally just re-implement everything I made in that. Anybody else? All right. With, uh, thank you, everyone. If we could give Ducky, um, I have the one more thing to say. If you if you like games and you like board games, I totally brought board games with me, and I know several other people who did as well. Uh, so especially if you're not someone I know, I would love to come play with you. And and also if I know you, obviously we're friends. <laughs> I would love to play board games with you sometime over this weekend. Yep. <laughs> You get an early minute, possibly, to afternoon tea.